Kelly. I'm a staff cardiac surgeon at the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, I've been in practice for eight years and have performed 1,500 valve surgeries. Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com. Very happy to be here with Dr. Eric Roselli. And a question, Dr. Roselli, is what attracted you to cardiac surgery? The thing that's most, uh, most exciting to me about what I do is that I get to make a difference in people's lives immediately, every day. In a very short period of time when we meet somebody to be involved with them and their whole family to make one of the most important decisions in their life. And, and uh, it, it's a privilege I, I, I never underappreciate. I love it and I'm gonna do it for a long time. Dr. Roselli, a lot of patients in our community have what is known as an aortic aneurysm. Can you explain what that is? So what it means in simplest terms is an enlargement of the aorta. So a lot of folks think about the aneurysm like there's a, a, a weak spot that's bulging out the side of a blood vessel. And there are aneurysms that are like that. But most aortic aneurysms, which is the, probably the more common problem that we see in, in, in our field and, and relevant to valve disease, are what we call fusiform aneurysms, where the whole aorta is enlarged like a balloon. Mm. And because the stress on the wall of that aorta is evenly distributed, we can often predict how dangerous that aneurysm is, is going to become or, or how much it may be. What causes an aortic aneurysm? We know that there are some risk factors, the most important way of which is family history. The reason that's important is because a lot of aneurysms are caused by genetic causes, some of which we know of and we can screen for, many of which we're still learning about every day. Uh, some of the factors that you can control uh, that have an impact on how fast an aneurysm will grow is your blood pressure. The doctor tells you you have borderline hypertension, don't ignore it, take care of it, treat it. Uh, and that's true, in fact, because hypertension is associated with uh, a lot of cardiovascular disease. Can aortic aneurysms be harmful to the patient? Yes, absolutely. The, I think one of the biggest problems with aortic aneurysms is the fact that they don't cause symptoms until they're so dangerous that they're life-threatening. An aortic aneurysm can rupture and you can bleed out from it, or the aorta can tear and start to fall apart. And that will cause a serious abrupt onset of symptoms, which many times we can address in emergency surgery. The important thing to be specific about is thoracic aneurysms are often associated with aortic valve disease, and most commonly bicuspid aortic valves. We think that at least a third, if not half, of patients that have bicuspid valves also have a propensity to develop an aneurysm of the first portion of their aorta, either the aortic root or the ascending aorta or the aortic arch or a combination of all three. And so it's important when someone is, uh, has the diagnosis of a bicuspid aortic valve that they have the appropriate screening done to make sure they don't have the aneurysm that's associated with it. And you can have the aneurysm even if your bicuspid valve is functioning perfectly well or if it's stenotic, or if it's regurgitant, or a combination of all those things. So for the patients who have been diagnosed with a valve disorder and an aortic aneurysm, can these be treated together? Yes, absolutely. So um, most often we'll treat them together. The decision that has to be made by someone with a lot of experience in it, I believe, we can combine the operation for the valve and the aneurysm uh, in one setting without adding really any significant risk. Now in valve disease, we often hear about the repair or the replacement. Is it the same thing with aneurysms? Can they be repaired or are there parts that are just replaced? We, we generally use those terms interchangeably because those repairs have not proven to be very durable. And so in general, we replace that disease segment of the aorta. And it makes sense because the tissue itself is not healthy uh, and still under pressure. And so by replacing uh, that segment of the aorta, we've taken care of the problem. The nice thing is, unlike a, a valve replacement, um, the replacement for the aorta is a piece of polyester that will hold in all of us. So Dr. Roselli, can you tell us about outcomes for the treatment of aortic aneurysms? The Cleveland Clinic uh, last year, uh, in over uh, nearly 500 elective operations on the ascending aorta, our risk of mortality was 0.4%. That is exceptionally low. And then that's important to understand because that's the number that we balance against the risk of rupture or dissection or complication from your aneurysm. Uh, again, I think the, the key is to go to a place that has a lot of experience where they have a, the, the complete team uh, to take care of all the complex portions of the operation that are important for, for having those great outcomes.
So what would you suggest as the most important piece of advice? We, we cruise along in our everyday lives and then when we have a diagnosis, we're stopped in our tracks. And when, and when that diagnosis is an aneurysm, I, I, I understand how it can be really scary. Uh, but it doesn't have to be. And so uh, stay calm, uh, find somebody who understands the disease, learn about it, and develop a plan. We have many people with the diagnosis of aneurysm who live perfectly normal, long, healthy lives.